get uniform, go around and come back in the door there. Who do you look at? A police officer. You look at a different person. <coughs> what are you looking at? A police officer. You're looking at the uniform, the badge, the authority that that officer had. So what is his authority? That's the anointing. He went down and put on his anointing. He came back in. So now, oh, there's a policeman in the present. So I gotta be a little more careful now. Huh? Well, that's the way the devil identify the Holy Spirit in people. And just for evidence, go to Mark. Chapter 5, I believe, start at verse 1, I believe that's where it is. Chapter 4 or 5, I think it's 5. Verse 4. 4. Is that man in the tomb? I believe it's 4. No, that's in 2. The man that was in the tomb? Yeah. That's verse 2, chapter 2? Uh -huh. Verse five, chapter 5, verse 2. Oh, yeah, it was um, chapter 5, right? Uh-huh. Mark chapter 5. Okay. We're going we're gonna to show you the authority he gave me. Somebody read, starting at the first verse. St. Mark chapter 5, starting at the first verse. Somebody read. Which one? Chapter 5, verse 1. Oh, and they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, he had Now, who, who came out of the ship? When Jesus came up out of the ship, mm -hmm. okay, read. Immediately he had met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Okay, we're talking about see an unclean spirit then? Uh-huh. Now, of course, when you come on show with the boat or the ship, you got to come up the hill, right? Mm -hmm. So immediately when Jesus, they came across this water and they came to landing and he gets out of the boat and he walks up the hill, the man comes out of the tombs naked. Couldn't nobody pass that area. Could nobody hold him down. They chained him down. He bust him like thread. They fettled and buckled him and bolted him down. He bust him like thread. You okay? Mm -hmm. He cut himself with stones. He was so savage. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus walked up the hill, he came out of those tomb and came out to meet, meet Jesus. And you'll see it right there. Mm -hmm. He came out to meet Jesus. What did he say to Jesus when he met him? Uh, he said, well, when he saw Jesus so, off, he ran and worshipped him. He did what? He ran and worshipped What worship. verse is that? That's a verse 7, 5 and 7. Okay. Go back to verse 4. Because that he had been off bound with feathers and chains. Okay. Read. With chains had been plucked as under by him, and the feathers broke in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. Uh huh. Go ahead. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Okay. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God. He recognized who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. First place, he recognized to the point he worshipped him. Mm -hmm. He ran and he fell down before him as a form of worship. And then he wanted to know, what have I to do? Why are you coming? What are you going to do? You come to torment us, but I know you're going to cast us out. I know who you are. I know you're going to cast out the unclean spirit. So let us go into the swines. You know swines, all right? 
Yeah. Hogs. What we call pigs, we call hogs. Pork chops, steak. Pork sausage. Bacon. Hogs. That's where they went. Now he recognized that Jesus was who? The Son of God. Now this was a savage man. They were savage. But he recognized the anointing of God. And he worshiped. And then he acknowledged that he knew that Jesus had authority and was going to cast him out. Amen. So he looked for it. He knew he was getting ready to get cast out. So he requested where he can go. Mm -hmm. Where they can go. How many was it? It was legions. Mm -hmm. And that one man, that's why the man was so powerful and so strong. Because that was legions. You know what legions is? You're talking about some 14,000. This man had the strength of some 14,000 men. You know how much strength the 14,000 men have? So what happened is that he recognized the anointing of God and Jesus cast him out and he became civilized. And this is what happened when Jesus told his ten disciples I give you authority to go and I want you to cast the demon unclean spirits out of people. Do you know people cannot help themselves? They can't help it. When they got strongholds, and the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians says these strongholds, but the pulling down of the stronghold, we don't use weapons of, you know, the, the carnal, the carnal weapon, but we use what it says, if imagination or the mind or something like that, you can read it. But it's it strongholds. Is that why when they say that uh, a lot of times people say, I'm going to come to church when I stop drinking, when I stop doing this, when I stop doing that, and people say you come just as you are because of those strongholds. That That's what we talked about, Paul. When you ever hear people say, I'm going to start coming to church when I um, buy new clothes or when I stop smoking or when I stop hanging out I said and it. doing this. I'm going to start going to church. I said it. And I said yeah, it for I have years. To, yeah, and that's, so is that, is that the same thing when you say uh, strongholds? Yeah. Because you can't really do it yourself. You, and you, like says, you have the will, you want to yeah. do it, you try to yeah. do it, yeah. and you keep falling back from right. it because as a stronghold got a hold of you and you can't stop it. That's why I say come. I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to tell you, teach you, just like the Holy Ghost is. Give it. You cannot stop. Or what I've heard before yeah. is, um, you can't wait till you get right to come to God because you can't get right without yeah. God. Right. Like, you can't wait till you get right. right. right way to pray. And even and regardless, to right, of, so regardless of what's right going, to going on in your life, you cannot stop a stronghold. That's why you got to come at you all. So that's why Jesus gave the anointing to his disciples and to you and to you and me. That's why he gave the anointing because once you stop, Acts chapter 3, verse 2 or 3 verses, once you stop, the Holy Spirit and the anointing work in such a divine way until you are not familiar with him and you don't know what he's going to do in you. You don't know when he's going to use you, how he's going to use you, or anything. And in the third chapter of Acts, Peter and John had walked every morning going up to prayer. Every day they went up to prayer. And walked through the gate of beautiful. Every day. And the Bible said they brought that lame man there from birth and laid him at the gate of beautiful every day. Do you imagine how many days they walked past that man and probably put some money in his cup and stuff like this and never, and nothing ever happened? But one day, one day, when they walked past that man and he had his cup out, when they walked past and the Holy Spirit said, oh, this is the time. They stopped. And they turned around. 
And he looked the man in the eye and said, look on us. Look on us. And when that eye contact made, they seen the Spirit of God in, that, in Peter and John. And they reached out to him to took him by the right hand. Now, when he took him by the right hand, the Bible said strength began to come into his ankles. He felt this action in his ankles. He felt that action. Amen. No, he didn't feel it until he, until he touched the anointing. The anointing was coming through the eyes, then it come through the hand. And when that anointing come through the eyes, came through the hand, the man could start responding, responding. And the man leaps up and went up in the temple with them, shouting and jumping for joy. What did it? Education didn't do it. Peter wasn't singing to him with a beautiful voice. He wasn't preaching to him with the powerful gospel preaching that he usually preach. But he obeyed the Holy Spirit. He obeyed the Holy Spirit because he had the anointing on him to go and cast out the unclean spirits. Only when the Holy Ghost, only when the Holy Ghost leads you to do it, not when you want to do it. See, when I walk by people and I see people standing back there in that corner shooting needles and things, I want to do something so bad. I want to do something. I want to help them. I want to go over and and, and, and this, I just want to do something to help them. But I can't. How many times Peter and John walked past this man and said, poor fellow. Oh, I wish I could do something to help him. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's because it tells you right here. The reason why they were able to do that, they took into the Holy Spirit, they were led at the time. At that time. They are fasting, they stay consistently in prayer and communicating with the Lord at all times. And fasting and praying. So that's why they were able to take heed of the Holy Spirit when He told them at that particular time, this is the time to approach. This is the time. Because they stayed in prayer. They stayed in communication with the Lord. Every day they went to that's prayer. That's right, every time, all the time. And when they and got the up there, and this particular time, yeah. Holy Spirit is over. Yeah, this is now it's time. Yeah. The man that walked in the line, lame from his mother's room, jumped up and leaped in the joints. Now what were the results of them? What happened to them? They got, they had to go to jail because the man was healed. They went to jail, they were beaten with 39 strikes, mm -hmm. with a whip that every time it hit it bust his skin. 39 lashes. Yeah. They were whipped twice mm -hmm. because of that man. They, they, they got healed from what they did. But they didn't give up. They put them in jail. They whipped them, beat them, put them in jail. And the next morning, they brought them, went down to get them and bring them to court. And they wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. They wasn't there. The Bible said an angel come and unlocked the jail and, and told him to go down into the square and preach to the people. No doubt their clothes sticking to them with blood. And they went down there and they was up on a platform in the square, like Times Square somewhere, and preaching to the people. So here comes somebody up to the courtroom and told them, the men that you sent to get out of jail so they they down in the square down there preaching. Yeah, I'm preaching to the people. What? They were getting ready to kill the jailer. Because if you let a person escape, it's your life for the one you let escape. If you let them escape, then they take your life. Ooh. 
So they were getting ready to, to, to do them in, but somebody came running up and said, them people you looking for, them, them guys you looking for down in the square, up on the, uh, up on the, up on the platform preaching to the people. You read it. In the act, somewhere between four, I think it's in the fourth, fifth chapter, somewhere, fourth chapter I believe it's in. It's there. So I'm sharing with that that Jesus called the twelve disciples together so he can give them a little further training before before he leave here. And he want us to learn about what he taught them that be not deceived everything that we God have put in the church, everything that they established is good and very good. And it should be. But the eyes cannot take the place of the hand. The nose cannot take the place of the ears. So nothing that we have, nothing can take the place of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, these people can, we can, we can walk around here and we can push on people and we can uh, say we're slain in the Spirit and all these kind of things, but until you see a lame man from birth jump up and walk and something that, that supernatural happens, it could be sorcery. And if you want to, re if you want to know about the sorcery, read the eighth chapter of Acts with the guy called Simon. Simon had the whole city of Samaria deceived with sorcery. The whole city was deceived with sorcery. And but when Philip came on the scene and preached Jesus. Then they could see the difference in the sorcery and the real gospel. Mm -hmm. And this is what God wants us to see this day and time. This is what he wants us to see. The difference in the real spirit than the counterfeit spirit. Mm -hmm. The difference in the real gospel than the counterfeit gospel. He want us to know life is a, you know, you're like George Meyer said? Mm -hmm. George Meyer said what? Everyday life, living, uh, living uh, everyday life, joy, or something like that in everyday life. Isn't that like her thing, what? that her introduction thingy that comes on? It's on my Joyce Meyer. Hmm? George Meyer. It's enjoying everyday living, or everyday enjoying life. Enjoying. Everyday life. Everyday life. And that's what God wants us to do. Enjoy everyday life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do all this nonsense, gimmicks, and uh, uh, stuff that all that to enjoy everyday life. You have issues, deal with them. Everybody have issues. And everybody have the same kind of issues. Some way or the other. Mm -hmm. So, we don't have to go through a lot of Ricky Roll, this, that, and the other to deal with it. Mm -hmm. God speak to someone, tell them, cast that unclean spirit out of that person. Mm -hmm. That person want to be delivered, but they can't help it. Want to be delivered, but they can't help it. And once that Holy Spirit, that Holy spirit move on the person and cast that unclean spirit out of that person, that person might roll over the floor, it might run the high speed all the way around, wherever, ain't no telling what it might act, what kind of action it may have. But when he finished, he's free. See, I've seen the Holy Spirit, man come into church drunk, staggering, smell like I don't know what. Trying to talk all over everybody, trying to preach, trying to sing, cutting up. People coming to the church like that? Yeah, and and uh, three or four anointed people 
got her not, it wasn't here, it was in the church I was in one hour earlier. And three or four anointed people got around that man and commanded them demon to come out of him. The man ended up on the floor, foaming at the mouth. Ew. Nobody touched him, nobody messed with him, nobody bothered him. He puked all over the floor. Oh. Everything. That puke and stuff, that, that alcohol and stuff, was, it was a terrible scene there. But when he, when it was all said and done, that man was just uh, sober and he looked around and said, he didn't know what to say, didn't know how to act. From that day on, you, you wasn't, a, wasn't a person in the church more faithful and, and, and courageous than that guy. He was set free. Never drank another alcohol. He never, he was just as wonderful as he could be. Kind to children and people. And there was nothing in the church that he wouldn't do that he could do. Anything he could do. He was always there, faithful, to do anything he can. See, I've seen the power of the Holy Spirit most. Love you guys. Are you done? Any questions? Any comments? Great message. Huh? I hey. agree with Brittany. <laughs> What'd you say? Great message. Great message. Why? Because.